Coming up, there will be a homecoming football game for Madison High School. After all, how the pandemic forced the school to make some last-minute changes in the game plan. And answering the call, firefighters leaving their post in South Dakota to battle growing wildfires in other states. Good morning, this is Kelly Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. President Donald Trump and First Lady Melania Trump have tested positive for COVID-19, according to a tweet from the president. The president's positive coronavirus test comes after he and First Lady were exposed to one of their closest aides, Hope Hicks, who tested positive Thursday. Both the president and the first lady began self-quarantining Thursday night after receiving word of Hicks's positive test. According to a memo from the president's physician, the president and the first lady are both well at this time and they plan to remain at home within the White House. On Thursday, South Dakota released more positive COVID-19 cases and deaths than ever before. There are 747 new cases, but state officials say some of those cases should have been reported on Tuesday and Wednesday. They had issues with how the results were reported. The number of active cases rose to more than 3,800. The state also confirmed 13 more people have died. That brings the total of COVID-19 related deaths to 236 since the pandemic began. At last report, 214 people with the virus were in South Dakota hospitals. New numbers are expected later this morning. The pandemic has resulted in two South Dakota high school homecomings being played during the same game. Madison will play Miller Highmore Herald Friday night in Madison after each team's original opponents had to cancel due to the coronavirus. Madison's activities director had to act quickly to find a replacement team after Millbank bowed out Wednesday afternoon. There's other teams this year that have lost games to COVID-19, so um, we, we knew that there might be a possibility of getting a game still on the schedule, but it was so late. You know, it's Wednesday. You know, football coaches don't like, they like to have time to prepare for their games. Ricky says the main sticking point was where the homecoming game would be played. Miller Highmore Herald wanted the game played in Miller, but then agreed to play in Madison. Turning to weather now, it's a rather chilly start to the day in Kelloland. Let's find out what the rest of the day will bring with meteorologist Scott Munch. Good morning, Scott. Well, good morning, everybody. We are looking at uh, cooler than average temperatures that will last straight through this coming weekend across eastern Kelloland. Numbers mainly in the 50s will be a little bit warmer across western South Dakota, and everybody should start to warm as we go into next week. I'm going to show you what's going on with our outline today. So we'll go temperatures more like mid-October through the weekend. Little rain chance. That's what we have going in our forecast. So. Yeah, singing the same tune with that. Very little chance for rain. A limited moisture found across the area. More details with Brian Karstens coming up in a couple of minutes. Thanks, Scott. Two women are waking up behind bars this morning in connection with a child neglect case. Wednesday afternoon, Sioux Falls police responded to a report of children being left unattended. Investigators say 21-year-old Jennifer Labatt left her one-year-old girl and two-month-old boy with Jaslyn Kaufman. However, authorities say Kaufman then left the children. The address that they gave, uh, the officers weren't able to find anybody there and it didn't seem like anybody had lived there for, for a while. And they ended up finding mom and the children and actually the friend as well. Police say they found meth in the car where the two women were. Labatt faces charges of abuse or cruelty to a minor. Both Labatt and Kaufman also face drug charges. Authorities say the children were not hurt. A 36-year-old Sioux Falls woman is facing charges of abuse or cruelty to a minor. Police say Wednesday afternoon, a 7-year-old told her teacher that her mother had hit her with a plastic rod. Officers arrested Tara Ironcloud. Authorities say the girl didn't have any serious injuries. Firefighters everywhere, including some in South Dakota, have been traveling to different parts of the country to battle large wildfires. Rapid City firefighter Tammy Stottle is currently deployed on the Mullen Fire in Wyoming. This morning we had a IR flight that showed we're at 117,000 acres. So we've had some significant fire growth. A lot of that to do just to the topography, weather, the wind speeds that we've had in this area. Two Rapid City firefighters just returned home from Oregon and Colorado. There are currently seven deployed in California and Wyoming. If you have any bats hanging around inside your house, take note Sioux Falls Animal Control may not come to your rescue right away. Because it's getting so many calls about bats, well over 600 this year, animal control will no longer respond after hours unless someone has been exposed or bitten by the bat. If somebody does have a bat in their home in the middle of the night, um, we're going to request that, you know, if there's been no contact or nobody's been bitten or it's not one of these situations where the bat's with somebody that's been sleeping, etc., 
we are going to just have uh, dispatch schedule that for the next day. We'll follow up the next day as soon as officers come in in the morning. If you can't wait till morning, DeYoung suggests locking the bat in the room and open a window or door. She says more than likely the bat will leave on its own to go outside and feed. One bat alone eats up to 4,000 mosquitoes in one night. And that's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Carstens. All right, weather it is, and we've got a few high clouds coming in this morning. So after a frosty start to the day, clouds will probably keep our temperature a little more limited. And in addition to that, we've got to verbally mention a few showers or sprinkles. That may be a better way to put this, but uh, at any rate, it looks like 6 o'clock this evening. Some of those coming through southern and southeastern Kettle Lands. Sioux Falls could get a little bit of that moisture, but whatever manages to fall, I think a lot of it will be done tomorrow. In fact, the chance of rain in Sioux Falls looks very limited now on Saturday, but remaining cool. I still in the 50s from Sioux Falls to Aberdeen, 60s to the west, and then Sunday will begin our warming trend in Rapid City. I think we'll make it in the low 70s, but there may be some frost in the morning again in our southeastern counties. So we still have a little chilly weather to go, and then we're going to make some progress here. 55 Brookings today, 58 in Huron with clouds and a few spots on radar from time to time. Forecast tonight with the clouds overhead, not quite as chilly. 39 Brookings, 41 Mitchell, Rapid City near 40 after some Pretty gusty winds this afternoon. Those should uh, die down a little bit, but they'll come back during the day tomorrow in rapid highs around 60 there. 56 Sioux Falls, 50s one more day going into Sunday, and then we're back to the 70s next week. 76 by Monday. Looks like a very breezy and mild start there on Monday as well for Aberdeen. High 75, and most of next week for Pier and Rapid City looks very mild. We could make it to the low 80s on Tuesday for both Pier and Rapid City. And you know, most of the forecast is dry. Check out the latest details right here at Kettleland.com. Have yourself a great Friday.